Today, we will be talking about the history of wine, the process of winemaking, and the role of yeast and bacteria in wine. Wine production has been historically linked with microbiology throughout history. Biomolecular archaeological evidence has shown that wine production could have started 9,000 years ago in China. Further analysis concluded that this first fermented beverage was a mixture of rice, honey, and the Chinese hawthorn fruit. Civilizations from the regions around Armenia and Georgia were also using the common grape, Vitis vinifera, to intentionally be fermented. Biomolecular archaeologist Patrick McGovern discovered residue of tartaric acid from grapes in 7,400-year-old jars in Iran. Wine is a huge part of our human history, more than just a beverage, as grape wine was used to hold alcohol-soluble active compounds from plants like alkaloids and terpenoids in ancient Egypt. These fermented mixtures were used as medicine vessels. When the existence of microorganisms were being debated, Louis Pasteur first proved that microorganisms were responsible for the production and spoilage of wine. He proved that heating the fermented wine killed some of the spoilage microbes and improved the shelf life of wine. He also encouraged fermentation in a sterile environment to prevent unwanted organisms from entering the system. Other than limiting exposure to light, high humidity, and high temperature, there are other ways to preserve wine. Terabith tree resin is one of the earliest wine preservation additives. It was described by the Romans as a wine preservation technique and used throughout the Middle East. This is an antimicrobial agent that prevents wine from fermenting into vinegar. One of the most common modern preservation techniques that is theorized to have been initially used by the ancient Greeks is the use of sulfites. Volcanic sulfur dioxide was discovered to be alcohol soluble and observed as a disinfectant. This was applied to wine and it halted the fermentation process and prevented wine from further fermenting into vinegar. This is an additive that is still very prevalent in modern winemaking. So now we are going to talk about the basics of wine and its process. About 99% of wine produced is made from grapes, but can also be made from other fruits such as raspberries, boysenberries, strawberries, apples, and pears. The only requirement is that the fruit must contain enough free sugars to support growth of yeast and yield a sufficient amount of ethanol concentration, which is generally greater than 12% by volume. The process of red wine begins with the harvesting of grapes. It is important to pick the grapes at just the right level of maturity, which means that the concentrations of sugars and acids, pH, size, and weight must be at the right levels to create a particular type of wine. As grapes ripen, the flavor and color compounds of the sugar concentration increases while acids usually decrease. And if the grapes overripen, they may contain too much sugar or too little acid. As a result, this does not create a very good tasting wine. After the harvest, destemming and crushing occurs which crushes the grapes and produces must, which is the juice, seeds, and skins of the grapes. Once the must is produced, alcohol fermentation occurs, where yeast converts the sugars into ethanol and carbon dioxide. The yeast may already exist in the extracted grape material or purposely added to enhance this step. The most frequently found yeast on grape surfaces is called Colecora epiculata, while Saccharomyces cerevisiae is usually introduced in the grape handling and crushing steps. All during this primary fermentation, maceration also occurs in which the red pigment from the grape skin is extracted into the grape juice. Once this step happens, malolactic fermentation takes place which is carried out by specific lactic acid bacteria. This is where malic acid is converted into lactic acid in order to reduce the amount of acid present in the grape juice material. After fermentation, racking occurs and produces free run juice, which is less than 75% of the total juice volume. The remaining juice is then pressed and combined with the free run juice and stored in oak barrels. This wine then goes into the aging step, which can take anywhere from a few weeks to several years. Because the wine sits for a long time in the barrels, this gives the juice a cloudy and hazy appearance and therefore has to go through a clarification step, which creates its clear appearance. Finally, the wine is bottled and sold for consumers to buy and drink. Yeasts are the most important microorganisms catalyzing the conversion of grape sugars to ethanol. 
Without oxygen, yeast converts the sugars of wine grapes into alcohol and carbon dioxide through the process of fermentation. The most common yeast associated with winemaking is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It is typically inoculated from a culture stock and favored due to its predictable fermentation capabilities, tolerance of high levels of alcohol and sulfur dioxide, and ability to survive in normal wine pH 2.8 to 4. Some grapes brought in from harvest contain a wild yeast, Cloecora apiculata, that dies during yeast fermentation or shortly afterwards. Along with the production of alcohol through the metabolism of grape compounds, yeasts are able to influence wine aroma and flavor. For example, the characteristic aromas of Sauvignon Blanc are due to the volatile thiol compounds released from S. cerevisiae. The bacteria associated with grapes and wine are members of the lactic acid bacteria family and conduct malolactic fermentation, the decarboxylation of L-malic acid to L-lactic acid. The fermentation reaction is undertaken by the family of lactic acid bacteria, Enococcus eni, and various species of lactobacillus and pediococcus. Other products that may also be formed are lactic acid, diacetyl, acetic acid, acetoin, and various esters. This provides microbial stability through the removal of a fermentable carbon source from the wine and reduction of acidity by increasing wine pH 0.2 to 0.5 units. Malolactic fermentation can also enhance fruity berry aromas. Almost all red wines undergo malolactic fermentation and a range of white wines benefit from this bacterial fermentation. Wow, that was a lot of information. If you learned something new today, pat yourself on the back. To recap what was presented to you, we have a short video that reviews the process of winemaking. We hope you can apply some of the information that was presented, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation today. Thank you!